Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the 22 Grand Pod podcast. In this episode, we're talking to former Baby Shambles guitarist, Patrick Walden. With Pete Doherty at the helm, Baby Shambles were one of the most talked about bands in Britain as soon as they formed back in 2004, and were quickly playing to sold out venues up and down the country. Pat was able to join me and Tom during lockdown from his home in London, and it turned out we'd all been at the same Paddington's gig just a few years ago. Um, I saw you, when I last saw you, Tom, I came with Adam, I think it was a couple of years ago, you played a gig in Hackney, I think it was. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Um, at the, in Mangle. London Fields, was it? Oh, yeah, I went to that, yeah. I think Mang- it, was it Mango? Is it called Mango? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, it was like 2017, end of 2017, I think. It was that yeah, place with like mad security searches, because that, that was thing it. happened. What was going on? It was like acid attacks, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that, that, it took that, took everybody about fucking yeah. forever to get in, didn't it? Didn't yeah. think I was going to get in. They're like, they're they're like, like when you go... <laughs> um, yeah. Oh shit! Was that last time? Yeah. Uh, who was you? Who was you with that? Was you? With, was Adam there? Adam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah. I still think that. Oh, yeah. I, it doesn't. Doesn't he do? Um, he, he does. Does he some do some kind of like? Um, Social work or something now. Or he's like a therapist. Yeah, he's a therapist. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. Uh, yeah. He's oh a wow, that's that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's nuts. That's what he's done. Oh. I'm like, so he still does his music and stuff. But yeah, does that as well. Amazing. Yeah, man. Give us an idea of like what you were doing at that time, Pat, and how you ended up being I was, part of the baby that, shambles. Yeah, I was working. I was living in Old Street. It was like I think if we're talking about early two thousands. And I was um, playing in a few bands around the area, and not not all of them were like um, were like bands gigging, but a lot of them were studio stuff. And there was a lot of weird, mu- really cool, weird music, art, art music, kind of electronic music being made. And I'd be asked to do lots of guitars and stuff. And um, and I was working in a bar called the Dragon Bar around there, which was like a hub of like artists and creative people, and musicians, and so on. There'd be lots of Sort of events and I know it was, it, there was a real it was a different kind of thing it was really arty and creative but then I was working also at Rue's Studios do you remember Rue's Studios it was in in Old Street um yeah yeah I remember that <laughs> Gemma's dad owned it I think yeah that was right yeah. Yeah. oh yeah of course She's, Gemma was uh, drumming once you yeah and and uh so I was sort of working there occasionally and um and you get to meet every single band don't you that's around the area there as well yeah good. And there was another rehearsal room, like the premises that I used to be around a lot and work at, and then uh, the foundry. Um, there was a few places. Anyway, there, but the, the, there, there was loads of bands. And then it was around that time, he, Pete used to come in and, and sort of just, he would just be there and rehearsing, and all those friends of his, that's where I sort of met him. Um, the Libertines, I remember, had, had like done their first record. I really liked their first record. It, from, from when I met him, it was, it was only like about probably a month later we started playing. Because he was working with a friend of mine, James, who ended up being the Baby Shamans manager. Oh, uh, James Malord. Yeah, I was doing some guitar or some bass for a band called The White Sport, and then um, he put me in touch with Peter. And I think there was that was when they was having some prob- problems at first with Libertines. I think it was kind of like they had had, had a break for a bit for whatever reason. I don't really know. What, yeah, yeah, I think it's well documented. And then um, uh, and then we started. So so when I met him, he, he was like. We started rehearsing and writing tunes together pretty soon. And I remember he had to go away somewhere for a while. I think it was a treatment centre or something like that. And he was like, oh, get, 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 get some, can you get a band together for when we get back, for when I get back? And that's when I think we had like four tunes. I think three of them were Peter's and one we'd written together. And uh, that's when I asked Drew to play bass and, and Gemma to play drums. Oh, really? So you, you introduced J- Drew and... Yeah, uh, Gemma. Yeah, to the band. Actually, before that, we did a single with Pete, and it was me on bass, and it was another guy called one of my best favorite musicians ever. It's a guy called Seb Rochford, um, who played yeah. drums. That was a seven inch. Right. It was just a seven inch, and uh, that was Pete's song, Baby Shambles, and it was recorded in one. Like, that's the first recording session I did with him. Right. Seb okay. Went okay. to play with like loads of people. He's an amazing drummer, just an amazing musician. 
Yeah, I know. I know you mentioned White Spot. I remember White Spot. Uh, me and me and Lloyd and uh, Josh we used to love that band. You know, but I, I remember seeing you because we we supported. We either supported or we just came to see you in the uh, the cockpit in Leeds. You, and, and White Spot supported Libertines or Shambles, was it? Yeah, there was a tour I did right where, where I was. Where, uh, did you play? Band. You played in both bands. Yeah, on the same like some gigs, I'll be playing in two bands. Yeah. I love that band. And I, I, I always remember the, the guy on bass, he, he had like, he was covered in paint. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I, I left as well and then they carried on and they added more people to it. And there was uh, Ronnie as well, who was sort of like, uh, like the Bez. <laughs> it was really cool. Oh uh, yeah, Ronnie Joyce. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. cool. It's Ronnie. And uh, yeah, the, those, those tours were great, man. And, and those early ones. And yeah, I'd be playing bass or guitar in that band and going on to play Shambles. That, you know, for, that was pretty intense. That was quite fun. Um, yeah, that was loads of fun. But yeah, that first single actually was like, uh, that first single was the first recorded thing, I guess it put out as Baby Shambles. That was me on bass, Seb on, Seb Rochford did drums, and Peter obviously guitar and singing. And, uh, but yeah, that was, that was just a one-off thing. <clears throat> and so when he went away, he asked me to get them together, and then I got, so I got Drew and Gemma, and we, we just rehearsed a lot when he, when he was away. Right. And when he got back, started playing i think i had four songs we started playing shows straight away he was so popular at the time it was just a ready-made audience like really small venues but just packed yeah it was amazing i, I remember like four tunes, i remember they're like maybe four or five but just play the same play them like twice each one like but, but we used to improvise quite a lot every night and play them differently but really? <laughs> yeah yeah but it was, there was there was always a, quite a lot of that in that band actually you know improv yeah improv yeah within a certain structure yeah, I was going to yeah. ask you about that part. Like, what was it like starting a new band, but like having that established audience already kind of thing? Well, that was, um, yeah, mate, it was great. If, if you're honest, like, to, to, if, you, if you, you know, being in a band, it's fantastic when you get out, when you, when you have playing to a room full of people. Yeah. It's fantastic. And the energy is just great. Um, it was weird as well, because it was just like, that whole, that whole, looking back on it, it was just, uh, Everything surrounding Peter at that time, it was it was odd. It was like it was just yeah, I never really experienced anything like that. So how was it? It was exciting and it was I just yeah, it was exciting. You're young, it's like just go with it. Yeah. yeah. I don't really know what's going on, but it's uh there'd be more people outside the venues than inside that could get <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what it that's you know, so yeah, it, it was kind of like yeah, I guess it's kind of every if you want to be in a band. If you're honest, when you're young, I guess it's like your dream, isn't it? To be in a band that like people are queuing around the block to see. How did you know? Um, how did you know Drew? Where did your yeah. relationship start with Drew? I've been friendly with him at, at this studios where I used to be working every now and then. Ah, oh, right. Okay. He rented a room there. Yeah. He, he like they rented the rehearsal room. He was doing some other uh, project. He was like, uh, he he was into quite a different scene before that as well wasn't they drew yeah i think so man i think i think uh i don't know would you call it a, a bit more metal or is it yeah yeah he, <laughs> i remember i've seen pictures of drew like um at someone at, at one of our friends houses he had like long dreads and shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Funny. laughs> so obviously pat you were the only guitarist in the band like did you enjoy that role did you enjoy that responsibility yeah um i guess yeah, I did. I how can I describe it? I had free reign to, to sort of like um, mix up rhythm and lead playing, and not even think about it in those in those two terms. I would just do my own thing, right? Which was and, and that's why you know that question you asked before, like how was it having that audience kind of uh, there, right? Just walking into like that situation first gigs you play their packs, and it was like. Uh, walking into that situation, but also being able to do what you've always wanted to do on, on your instrument. Like, yeah, you know, I was gonna, I was, yeah. right. I was gonna say, like, with Pete, obviously, like, he, he, I imagine he wrote a lot of the lyrics, didn't he? But, like, yeah. you know, your guitar parts were like just as important for me, like, in those songs, because, like, mate, you, you, you're a great guitarist, you know what I mean? So, like, it must have been good for you to be able to, like, yeah, you know, you were writing them songs that as well as everybody else kind of thing, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, Tom. It was, it was, um, looking back on it, I guess it was kind of quite, yeah, it was, it was a real, yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Like, you get, you get to do exactly what you want, and some, like, especially live as well, 
Yeah, it'd be so different each time you play it. And uh, I didn't have to, I was never thinking like, you know, you just go and see a lot of bands. This is a, this is a verse, this is a chorus. These are the chords I'm playing. This is the part I'm playing. It was never like that, um, for better or for worse. But when it was good, it was really good. And like, things would be different lengths. And I, I guess that was like a lot of, um, people get like a lot of their stuff out writing lyrics and stuff. I get a lot of my emotions out just ranged in the guitar. Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. So that was kind of my expression back then. I think all the, um, but I mean, for, as a guitarist and aspiring, like sort of wanting to get out there and just do a thing, that was like a perfect situation for me. Like it was just, you know, to be in a band, being the only guitarist and having like a, a bass, a solid, solid um, bass and drums just to like paint your stuff over. You know, there wasn't much thought behind it. It was mostly feeling. Does that make sense? You can, you can kind of tell, it's the way that Pete worked a, a lot of the time though, wasn't it? It was just like, it was like, yeah, it was. It was very instantaneous, and it was like, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly the word. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, um, yeah, if it, yeah, as long as it was real and sort of had some some touch of like feeling and honesty about it, you know. Yeah, could, could you you could be like you could be sat in a room with Pete, and like any time, and you know, like he, he's just that kind of person where he would just if he's got something in his head, they'll just look like right it'd start playing it or whatever and it'd just always be on the, kind of on the spot. Do you know what I mean? A hundred percent. I felt like that's exactly how like he worked most of the time. It's like, he, he just, if you're walking on, you know, like he could be doing anything and like an idea would pop into it. would be like, I've got a new song straight away. Yeah, there was, there was definitely that. And also like, I could just be tinkering around on, on the guitar. We spent quite a lot of time together, just me and him. He stayed at my flat, I remember in Ponder's End just writing mm. stuff but uh, or just hanging out there was a period of time it was quite intense like a lot of days on end sort of staying up writing stuff and I, i'd just be sometimes i'd just be messing around the you know an instrument as you're doing he'd just go what's that do it again and then he'd just go off with it and so repeat that and the song would come out of it but you need someone else's ears to like grab onto it do you know what i mean yeah that's that's such they, a good uh, way of working because like if you're doing that on your own sometimes you kind of ignore a lot of it and like that, you know, that, 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 yeah. that's that's yeah, if that's how you, that's how kind of... And also it's like someone having a bit of faith in you, I guess, because I guess someone just saying, that's good, that's what we need sometimes. As someone to say that to you, like, okay, I won't go with this, you know, or actually like, okay, it's worth working on this idea, which you might, because, you, because you're because you're making it yourself, you haven't got the, uh, the distance from it to see it for what it is. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. If you record something, and you come back to it, you know, a classic thing, and come back to it a week or two later, it sounds totally different. I could be like, what's that? Who's playing that? It's amazing. And at the time, yeah, I'd be, yeah. I'd be like, oh, this, is, this just sounds like everything I've done before. I don't like it. I don't like it. But it's a bit of distance from stuff really changes your perspective. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I agree. But like most of those songs that were, that I, on the first record that I was, wrote with Peter were, were done like that. They were just like, uh, it was like, it was like just chings of energy. And then you just go with it. It pretty much be written quick. It might be fine tuned a little bit. Yeah, but the yeah, like the bones of the song is done in like ten minutes. No. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes literally, like in it. Yeah, yeah. And then and then and then, then go <laughs> go and play it that night. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that, and yeah, that, that's it. That was always his attitude as well, wasn't it? It was like yeah, I hated that at the time. I was like, no, <laughs> I, I went with it. But and looking back, it was it was good, but. I was like, don't know, or, or he'd call a song that you just don't know how to play. You know, like in front of loads of people. It's like, you play that song, I don't know it. I just don't know it, but I'll have a go. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was like, wasn't it? He didn't really mind. I guess, and the people didn't mind either. It's kind of fun. But yeah, it was definitely hard. Yeah. I hope he doesn't do that tonight. So it's a song we don't know yet. Or like, he'd show us the tune that he'd written, like, like just before, just before the show, and be like, we'll do that tonight. I'm like, oh. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool though. It makes you like, yeah, it was good. I guess looking back, it was it was kind of unique that. There was a lot of like um, bands that played their stuff the same way every night. So that was really a good thing, wasn't it? I mean, my introduction to them, I was not, like the whole scene, it was like, I definitely, there was a lot of excitement around the Liberty. I saw a couple of their things at the, at the, at the Rhythm Factory and it was exciting. You know, I just, there was there was this mad energy around, so there definitely was a scene going on. I, I I personally was a bit more on the American side of music though, like what I was listening to. Yeah, like bands like Sonic Youth and those kind of experimental guitar stuff. You know, a lot of jazz music and that kind of stuff. I guess the indie kind of 
I think it came up around it, like lots of great bands that if you see them live, there's a difference, like the amount of bands you toured with, like yourselves and you can really enjoy bands live because live is just a different animal, isn't it? It's just like, you can really get into something. But the music I'd listen to by myself was generally like, uh, like nineties music, I guess the stuff I grew up yeah. with. Like from that era, what records from that early 2000s? I guess the first couple of Arcade Fire records I really liked. Right, oh uh, yeah. You know, Not really but, spoke about that much actually. Um, Stripes records. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Like, with Sonic Cues and stuff like that, I think I got introduced to that like a little bit later on because you, you, you're a bit older than me as well. Yeah. 40, 41. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah how so, like, I, I, I'm 35 now. Yeah, right. like, yeah I got introduced because, you know, I, I knew what it was, but I didn't really like pay much attention to it as much as yeah. until I got until I got a bit older. But um, yeah, I get like all of that that nineties stuff. Like I'm obsessed with yeah. that now. Well. That, that Daydream Nation album and and Dirty. That was a when I was yeah that time. Do you know what, Do you know what's weird? Like a couple of days ago, I, I, I live in Stoke Newington. I saw Thurston Moore. Like yeah, he lives out there, doesn't he? Yeah, he was walking behind me down the street, and I like, turned around and like. Fucking test them more, walking down me. Yeah, yeah. Quite well, weird. I met him a few times when we, when we played uh, festivals abroad and stuff, and uh, it was always weird. Cool to meet him. It was cool. I had exactly the same guitar, I think. Like, 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 like his son or something. I had the same haircut as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those kind of bands, I guess. And uh, there was definitely a scene, though. It's just, I felt like I, I could, also because of like, with. The, 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 let's be honest the hardcore drug drug taking drug addiction stuff going on it was kind of i felt a bit um introverted the whole time do you know what i mean i was a bit disc yeah. bit sort of like just into like just like wasn't the most social person i guess yeah i was yeah, gonna right. ask you about like touring at that time but and obviously tom you were involved in that like from an outsider looking in people say it's gonna be a bit mental like what was it like being in the middle of it kind of thing yeah it was mental it was but i kind of yeah um how was it? It was exciting. It was it was mental. It was it was um, frustrating as well, and it was it was just crazy, man. I didn't know really what was going to happen from one time to the next. I remember there was a period of time to two thousand and four. I think. Do you talk with us in two thousand and five, Tom? Yeah, and probably two thousand and four as well. I think. <clears throat> yeah, those times you didn't really know what was going to happen that day, and the police were following. There was all that police activity going on, following us everywhere. Things were getting raided, impounded, getting arrested, all that business. Yeah. Yeah, I remember being on being on a couple of bus. I used to stay on your bus quite a bit, didn't I? Like yeah, 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 venue yeah. to venue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and that is it's true actually. Like sometimes you never you do, you you never know the gig was even going to fucking happen or whatever. Well, yeah, the police were shut down gigs and then arrest everyone after the gig. So I remember. So yeah, it was um there was a lot of that going on and there was, there was undercover police everywhere. They were really after it all, weren't they? I remember one time when they came mm. to a gig, I can't remember where it was, in 2005, I think it was, and they, were, they raided the gig afterwards, and everyone was in the dressing room. Somebody said, oh, the police are coming. So get rid of whatever you've got. So I did, and uh, I just saw them come in the room, and they started stopping everyone. I, I, so I walked straight out, and they stopped me and said, you look like a guitarist. And I said, no, people always <laughs> say that. And I was like, somehow I just got out of that venue. <laughs> And, uh, but everyone got arrested that night. I remember I just went to stay in a hotel and the, and the bus got impounded. I just remember I really got away with that one. That was good. <laughs> but yeah, there was, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, loads yeah, stuff. there was loads and loads of that, that stuff going on. And it was, um, I guess, uh, how did it feel at the time? Because I kind of like was pretty wild myself in terms of like, I, was, I guess, uh, I don't know, how kind of, looking back on it, it was nuts, but it kind of just, I accepted it at the time. It was just, it was just what it was. Mm. It definitely wasn't normal. I guess it was kind of just like, it was, it was pretty non-stop. So for me, like it, it kind of, um, I don't know, like it, you just didn't really, just don't even know what to it, say. <laughs> it just, it, it just all happened so fast. Yeah. And like, you know, it was non-stop and it happened fast and it was just one thing after the other, wasn't it? And you know, there was a period of time we were playing gigs every single day, if not two times a day. But yeah, do, 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 can you remember a lot of that time, Tom? Do you know what? Um, I think the Baby Shamble stuff I do, like touring with you guys, I remember more than 
a lot of the other stuff that happened for us, I don't know why. It, I guess it was just very memorable. Yeah, that's and, a good. And, point. A, 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 apart, apart from apart from the nights where where we did take it a bit too far, and we were, you know, like you say, we were all a bit like out of it or whatever. Yeah. So like, it's hard to it's hard to remember some parts, but. Do you know what I remember about that time, really, I was going to say this actually, I was thinking about it, is I, I, it's more than vivid memories. I have a, actual, a more, it's more like a set of feelings I have about that whole period of time. And, and generally, the feelings are really positive towards like when we were playing shows. If, if they were good shows, they were the best shows I've ever done in my life. The feeling was amazing with the concert. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Just, and like, and kind of... just, and like, you know, the, the, everybody that I met at that time has like played such an important part in our lives as well, I guess. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do, I do. And there, there was a period of time when, like you say, a scene. It was like all our friends were on tour with us, and everyone that worked with us was our friends, which was for better for worse. It all got very messy. Mm. But it was like a whole a whole circus. It was just like a whole tribe going on tour. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's exactly it. And and yeah, so it was. It was um, yeah, I guess I still. Um, yeah, I got make sense of it all really. And now, obviously, you get to the point where. Uh, Gemma leaves. What are your memories of that time? Yeah, that's. Before I asked Adam to come and join. Um, it was all touch and go. It all felt really touch and go that whole time. You just don't know whether there'd be a band tomorrow, kind of thing. You know. Yeah, yeah. It was all uh, whatever reason reasons she left. I think she talked about that. Um, was the Parrot Boys like? Oh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember time, what about how they were involved. There was a time when. Yeah, didn't they join Drew. for a bit? No, so this was before Drew and what we talked about earlier, working at Ruse. There was a period that of time right. to talk about where I was playing. So it was me, Peter, um, Gemma played drums, and the two uh, Parrot brothers were playing guitar and bass yeah. as well. That was right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 yeah we did that. I just remembered. I just remembered that part. Of it, yeah. <clears throat> and we went and played story. So yeah, that that was before even Pete, I think, asked me to get the, get some musicians together. We went and played a few gigs around the UK, but generally like really small weird pubs in the middle of nowhere, but it was packed, so it was really weird. And I've um, just got to ask you about one of the headlines at the time when, I mean, you you had gigs at Brixton Academy, you were selling at Brixton Academy like only yeah. very shortly after you started. But it's obviously that incident where I've... <laughs> I've heard interviews where you called it just a bit of a, a bit of a laugh where you had a fight on, with Pete on stage, but what's the real story behind that? I think Pete was on probation and we were we were we were um getting a taxi the way down to that venue and we had to I think I think it was on curfew. I remember him saying to me, How do you feel about like having a having a scrap tonight or something? I was like, I don't really want to. <laughs> That's a weird question to ask. I don't I'd just rather just play some music. But he wasn't saying it to be funny, he'd been up for a few days and he was a bit I don't know. That's what he said to me anyway. And I do remember then, so I was a bit freaked out by that, but um, we, there's footage of it somewhere on the internet. It's really embarrassing now looking back. But yeah, <laughs> it, we were like, I was playing and he started grab, just grabbing me, just started grabbing me. And I kind of like, he was looking a bit sort of wiry and just like a bit out of control. And uh, I wasn't like, I wasn't particularly healthy either. And it was just a matter of that. I think he was whispering something in my ear. I think I just, funny thing is I took my guitar off and the roadie came to take it off me and then, then, <laughs> it, then it just got into it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was watching a video of that today. I was like, that guy's there quickly. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite funny. But yeah, I think it was just, you know, lack of, complete lack of sleep and uh, and just edginess and just paranoia and just, um, what was good though, we came back out after and played um, really well as far as I remember. Had a real bad, quite, quite a big argument backstage after that. Um, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was like a preconceived idea kind of thing. Oh, uh, not really. It wasn't like it wasn't like manufacture or anything. Like I didn't know I was going to kick up, kick him. When I did. I, uh, I, right. I, I just, he was just grabbing me. I'm like, I'm not going to let someone do that kind of thing. Oh, okay. And you know, and it was just like he, so he, was, he was like winding you up. Or, or yeah, or yeah, but quite you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just one of, it happened a few times at other venues as well, like pulling leads out of guitars and that. I guess it's like getting a reaction, made things a bit fun, a bit exciting, I guess. Well, I mean, those gigs must have been ace at the time, like, so that Brixton was great, because he used to go there as a, when I was a youngster and see loads, loads of, like, loads of bands. It's like, you know, some of the first gigs I ever went to was there. Yeah, you know, like yeah that, that is, that's one. We, we supported that night as well. Oh, you were there? Um, 
Yeah, we supported. Are you right? Okay. Well, I, don't, I don't know if it was that. I don't know if it was the time that you had a fight, or I was. I was there, but I can't remember who we supported that night. But we definitely supported you um, on one of the nights there. It might be yeah. the first time that you've done it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was brilliant cool. that night. I remember yeah. it. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? It was good. It was good energy. Um, what a great! It is a good venue that as well, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like I say, that that venue particularly because. I mean, I remember going to that venue so so much, so like from the age of thirteen, see bands, you know. So it's like it's actually, and then actually, you know, when you go and you see your band name on the front, you know, to put up, it's really cool. It was good. It was good. Just yeah, just looking at the first album. It's obviously sixteen songs on there, but I remember, I mean, quite a few good demos were left off. Like, what was the process in terms of deciding what went on the what on the album? Um, I don't, it wasn't, I just, we just recorded a load of stuff and then I think Peter and Mick decided what went on it. I, I think that's right. I think that's right. Okay. Yeah, I suppose yeah, that yeah. is quite a lot. It's quite a, quite a big album that, anyway, isn't it? So. Yeah, that is quite a lot of tracks. Like 16 songs. You no, know, it's part of me always yeah, thinks that album might have right, been done differently, but it's, it's, it's kind of like, it sounds so, so kind of different and messy and raw and everything. It kind of makes it stand, stand out a little bit, stand, stand apart a little bit because, not me, it was like, I don't remember the first, we did a single with, of Kilimanjaro with, with a B-side on it, um, with Paul Epworth, and it sounded really different. I really liked the way it sounded, with Man Who Came To Stay on it, but it sounded, it was a real different production to like Down in Albion. <clears throat> I just thought, I was, I sometimes think, what could that record have sounded like if it was produced like that? You know, I guess it is what it is. You know, we, that record was pretty much 90% just in a room, just playing. And Mick going, that's a good take. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you what was it like working with Mick Jones. Oh, great man, he was because um, as a yeah, it, I grew up listening to. I love the Clash. Mm. I love it. It was fantastic. It was, it was, yeah, it was just spending time in Wales recording that record in the evenings, just hanging out, him playing guitar, and singing songs. Um, that whole experience was really great. That, that was a good feeling working with Bill Price, the engineer, and, and you know he's done loads of great records like Clash and. Sex Pistols and Guns N' Roses records. It was just being around people who were really good. Do you know what I mean? Just like really yeah. good at what they do. Um, I think we probably frustrated them quite a bit with our behaviour. <laughs> I was going to ask you what was it was like, the process of recording, but you say you managed to like hammer it out kind of thing. Uh, so we did most of it, in, a lot of it in Wales and some in Reading, uh, some in Hammersmith. How The process was... Yeah, generally, get in the room and play, and, and, and it wasn't like a record where, um, since I, music where you, you'd sit down and do overdubs and yeah. work out the parts, and I mean, you can tell that by the way it sounds as well, uh, pretty, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of that kind of production, it was more just like a vibe. Yeah, it's, it's a very live album, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and for, for better or for worse, I guess, you know. Like, like, yeah, there, there was it. So it was, it was, yeah. That's what it was, really. It's kind of cool in a way because it's different. I saw a quote. Um, I was watching some documentaries today, and um, I saw one of you quotes saying, "You know, you wanted to be recognised as a band. You didn't want to be seen as uh, Elvis's backing musicians." Is that kind of how you all felt at the time? <laughs> who said that? You, who said that? You said that on the yeah. uh, <laughs> "Who the fuck is Pete Docket documentary? Yeah, it's, it's that not Elvis's backing musicians. I, uh, <laughs> do you know what? I'll be honest with you, man. At the time, I was just grateful to be playing in that band. I was never really, it was, yeah, it was a unique situation. But no, I don't know. But sure, I mean, it said that. Maybe I did. Yeah, I literally just I, did, I definitely it. want to be recognised as a band, but, I, you know, there's no denying that the focal point was the driver and focal point was Peter. And that was cool. It was just like, I guess I was maybe trying to say the music, you know. Yeah. It is, because it was a band. Yeah. There was a lot of work went into being a band. But obviously he was the figurehead of it and sort of like the uh, instigator of a lot of the music and sort of, you know, the, the energy. It was his kind of thing, it was, you know. So I didn't really get that feeling, no, because it was like, I know, I, know, I know the question you're asking, it was like trying to get, um, I want to be recognised, that kind of thing. I, I was really happy with where I was, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I'm really happy just playing guitar in a band and just like a band that people are coming to see, an exciting band and writing tunes and, and just doing my, you know? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And I remember uh, when you played Glastonbury, I mean, that was a massive deal because the, uh, the crowd that turned out for you was massive. Um, what are your memories of, of Glastonbury? 
Uh, I remember that I couldn't really hear my guitar. I didn't have it. My guitar wasn't loud enough. I wish it was, uh, and I wish I had a different guitar sound. That's what I remember. But I remember, that's looking back. I remember at the time, it was, um, it was surreal because it was, it was daytime. It was a huge crowd, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was like an evening crowd, but it was massive. One of those things that you it's kind of you're disconnected a bit, aren't you? I guess a bit introverted. Like I was looking back at the footage, I don't think I actually look out the audience very much. I just wish my guitar was louder. It's hard, to, hard. You can't hear yourself properly to really get the energy. But also, that was, um, I think, one of the first bigger stages. So I was so used to playing like, you know, the energy of a band playing a club. I, it's not. It's not. Um, it's not just a matter of putting that same band in a different environment, open air, and it would be the same. You know, I think you have to get used to playing those those kind of outdoor venues for it to, to find out a way to do it. I never really had, not, had enough time to do that. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, Gary, we interviewed Gary Jarman and he said the same thing, like you go from playing in the tent to going on the main stage and it's like anything can happen kind of thing. Yeah, uh, so we, we played Reading. Um, yeah, anything with a roof on basically feels a lot different. And it's like, I like it more and, and uh, it's easier to feel the energy kind of thing and we vibe off it. Yeah. So it was, it was, I mean, yeah, it was, it, 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 people, man, it was just fantastic. That it's just a lot more comfortable in it, like when you're, when you're yeah. playing in a, in a normal, yeah. indoor. It's less place. like work, especially, yeah. if, especially for bands like, like ours as well. Like when you're not a stadium rock band, it's like, yeah, different, yeah, they've got anthems. Like, I'm not saying, like, I'm not like. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They're, they're the tunes. Yeah, uh, yeah, not not that you did. Yeah, not not that you didn't have anthems because you did. But like, you know, you know what I mean. Like, there's um. Yeah, we had to, maybe in five more years we'd have the stadium anthems. <laughs> Do you know yeah, I mean? yeah. No, I mean, if those punk rock songs, the choruses, definitely. But yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. There was something. Yeah, so it's 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 just taking it from that environment it's worked in and then plonking it on that stage doesn't doesn't necessarily work straight away. But it w- would have done, you know. It just it just takes some time to get used to it and figure it out. Would you say that was? I mean, one of the questions is, uh, was there a high point from that period? Uh, I suppose that's got to be up there, is it, or not yeah, really because of the yeah. sound? The whole time, play, all those kind of things were high points. Going to Norway and playing shows with Sonic Youth and bands, that, and I think Dinosaur on the Dinosaur Junior on the play on Sonic. Youth, I think they were. Definitely Tonic Youth, but Dinosaur Junior, all these bands I sort of grew up listening to, it just felt like that was all just like, all right, this is this is great. This is like playing music and seeing people watching. I don't know, that whole thing was a hot. It was like, I just felt like I was doing what I really wanted to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just traveling with your friends. But that, yeah, Glastonbury was definitely a high point. Um, Brixton was a high point. Like, just to read the Top of Pops, that's the, that's Top of the Pops was still going there. Going yeah. There. You know what I mean? That was kind of like, you know, like you're in telly. That was, that was all, it was all like, it was such a, it was all just like, it was always kind of a high point really and a low point at the same time, like in my mental state. But it was all, it was, uh, you know, looking back, that was definitely a big thing to play Glastonbury. It was like the biggest crowd of the day. That was, that was cool. The, the recording, a lot of the time spent in studios, wish we'd done more of that, you know? Okay, that's, right. That's, I really, really enjoyed that. Yeah, that's something you said, right, Tom, but um, a lot of bands, uh, spent a lot of time touring and maybe well in your case Tom you said you should spend a bit more time recording or writing songs do you think? Yeah exactly that's where like it came in like we were spending too much time having fun I guess yeah, Not yeah, like, you, you know, I mean recording an album is one of the most fun things that we could possibly do like in my life but yeah I wish I'd have taken a bit more time to like figure out the album's like more consistently as well rather than have a, have a bit more direction yeah. maybe or something like that. yeah well yeah th- that and i think we took we took too long doing it basically as well yeah brought out a second album like a bit too late and then you know the momentum and everything had kind of we lost it a bit and when did that come out that second record um 2007 the end of the thing, I was kind of yeah. out of that whole scene by then because I was I, when I left it I left I didn't I just just like I, I was almost like I for whatever reason I just sort of just it was like I ne- I'd never been in it for a while so when I spoke to people again in 2009 or whatever I don't know how it changed that, that period from 2007 when they were doing their second record so, and then, so about 2009 I don't know how, how how the crowds were I didn't know how the whole you know the vibe what was going on yeah exactly that's what I mean like you, you, you kind of had to 
you, you kind of had to act quickly in that um, while the, while the buzz was still there because was it still there? It, it it kind of died off a bit, and like all these like more mainstream indie bands are coming out, and it ruined it ruined the feel of it a little bit, I guess, for us. Yeah. And when did you notice I, that? You know, when was that? Like two thousand six or something that happened? You noticed that? Two thousand seven, eight, I think. Yeah. Like you know, because like you said, we, the the real the the best time of it was like probably between. 2003 and 2007 or something, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that, definitely. I mean, that was the time I experienced. See, that's the thing. Um, yeah, like I say, it was... Like, I, I, I'd never experienced a sort of, like... I guess it was like, is it a come, like come down or everything was just... Was there, was there still that many people coming to the shows and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, like, shows were still good, but, like, I don't know, by the time the second record had come out, things were just changing a bit anyway. Moved on, yeah, where... Uh, yeah, no, uh, no. I guess it happens, doesn't it? I don't know, but it, I guess some goes in waves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Pat obviously got a touch on when you left the band. Yeah. Um, I was reading a quote on Enemy that said uh, the band had become a circus. Is that kind of your feeling at the time? At the time, I was really like I wasn't very well at the time, and yeah, it was a circus. But I was a big part of, you know, I. I was probably really angry on stuff I was saying, but I mean, I was acting really irrational. Like I wasn't very well the whole time, you know, so I'm not, it wasn't like they were circus and it was like, I was trying to keep it all normal and together. The whole thing was just fucking weird. The whole thing was just, it was a freak show. And there's a lot of dark energy around as well. I remember a lot of weirdos and just like, just people that I didn't want to have. There was a lot of people around that, I, I don't know, they just weren't cool. Um, so yeah, and it had been, but, but, um, yeah, I, I was really, really, my addiction had just gone through the roof. And it was like, I was just really erratic, unwell, and just but kind of psychotic, really, I guess. And like, how did it feel coming out of all that? Like, I guess being in the band might have justified, or maybe justified the drug use and stuff. Like, I coming had... out of that and not having the band behind you, how did, was that a bit of a, a scary yeah. time? Yeah, uh, looking back on it, I mean, I had, I had a drug problem before that band, and I had my own problems on and off for a long time before that band so it wasn't anything new to me then but then <clears throat> yeah coming out of it i just i guess i had a little project with seb again but i was just drinking i was just drinking so much and i was just not able to like it was, i was really depressed i was looking back i guess just think it took, i just i guess i guess kind of a not a breakdown as such but like how was it coming out of that? It was just like coming out of a whirlwind, leaving. Felt, I, I left, but I also felt like I was being I was being pushed out to a certain extent. I don't know how true that was, but I felt like that. But and then I left, and then it was like that was it. Yeah, there's some regrets there, definitely. Do you know what I mean? There was one of those questions you were saying, would you change anything? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard. Sometimes it depends how, you, how I feel on the day when you wake up. Like sometimes I think, no, things have worked out the way they should be. Do you know what I mean? I'm still friends with everyone. I haven't spoken mm. for a long time, but you know, I see him. I saw him a few years ago. Last time it was all cool. Um, yeah, I was going to say, you not when was the last time you spoke, spoke with Peter? I had a sort of brief message in a couple of years ago. It's cool. And uh, last time I saw him was in Kentish Town about four or five years ago. Just bumped into him. And just randomly bumped into him on the street. It's like, oh, really? Right. It's like, it's, it's like, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It's quite awkward. All right. It's like, it's like cool. And then that was it. That was it. What have you been, have you been up to? Anything musically, like yeah. recently? My my aim is to um, definitely try and get an EP out next year. Like do something. Next year, get it out just for myself. So I can start building up because I've got so much music to that's just been sitting around. Mm. But. Um, I'm kind of glad I went for the whole process of making a record. It was totally different to um, the sample stuff, which was just going and, and basically I spent too much time making it. And it just sounded kind of over, overproduced. So I think again, that experience is, is taking a bit, of, a bit of, from both both worlds. Like, just just do something and move on, but do it good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I look back, look, just... all these are work behind them. And I've just been like doing guitars for other people here and there and, and writing stuff, but not actually uh, putting it out you know, however, putting out yourself, whatever. And really, that's, yeah. that's what I need to be doing. I want to be doing, you know. 
Like, yeah, like it's, it. it's similar. It's similar to me actually. Like um, I like I I like overthink it and overcook it or whatever. And like I don't, you know, like I love it at first, and then I'll leave it too long, and I'll fall out of love with it or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and it, it easily happens. Like I've just got bags of songs, especially if you're working by yourself. Just sat there. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, um, I did some stuff. Actually, we did some recording with with my friend Mike and Drew um, a few years ago. I mean, but that could have gone done something really well. But then again, I wasn't too well at the time. You know, so there was another period of time where I sort of the same old shit. Kind of how are you doing? How are you doing now with all that stuff? Yeah, no, you're good. all good. Been good for a few oh, years. Good. Now. I mean, nice been over two years, so yeah, no, I'm doing really well now. It's kind of like oh, nice. that, that's really good to hear that, man. Yeah, no, thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, that's that, that it's, it's a relief, and I feel totally different, which is good. Um, yeah, well, I'd, I'd be uh, be, I'd be well up for hearing some of your songs as well. Maybe we oh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we could, um, but no, definitely, that's the thing to be and, and not judge it too much. It's definitely something I want to be doing. I should do an EP. That's the same, we've got the songs that you've written, just go and record it. No. Mm. Yeah. Once all this stuff's over, what's going on in the world at the moment? And uh, just just for self release something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's what I'm gonna do. It's not about anything like the whole experience of going and touring and that. It's, it's just want to make quite happy to make music at home and put it out. Yeah, done enough touring, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's like music has always been the most important thing. I guess music, and I, I listen to music obsessively still. I'm playing my guitar so much still. So I guess the thing that's missing is getting the confidence to just like get it together to actually make something and put it out. It's weird, yeah. man. Like I'm more than happy to put like, yeah, it's weird. I can put, put guitar on other people's stuff, but when it comes to your own stuff, it's like, that's the good thing about working with Peter back in the day. He'd be like, he'd just like, like I said earlier, just take someone to tell you like, that's cool, man. Go with that. A little bit of like an encouragement or yeah. something. And it kind of, that's all you need sometimes, you know, that lack of self-belief. Yeah, cool. It's a theme. So it's come trying trying to challenge. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally. I totally feel you on that one. Like I, I, I'm exactly the same. It's just self confidence, isn't it? And like, it's kind of like a fear of some someone criticizing you. But like, the thing is, as well, like, someone's gonna love it and someone's gonna hate it, and that's just the way it's always been. And I guess we just need to get get over that. Yeah, it's a bit nice. I don't really mean it from that point of view. I mean, it's like it's weird. It's just like, yeah, no, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you just got to get over and just do it, really, haven't you? Just just crack on with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, play yeah, guitar, I'm, I'm I, do, I teach guitar to a few people, and so I'm always playing and being creative in some way. But, mm. um, yeah, I mean, it would be just nice to have, have more stuff out there recorded. Like, not sitting on my hard drive, do you know what I mean? So looking back briefly to Baby Shambles, I just I just read there was a couple of times when you were set to play with them again, but you felt the environment wasn't right. Is that is that right? Yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't right as well. Okay, right. Yeah, but it was both. I mean, I see my my me my, bit, my my memories and 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 sort of uh, I'm a bit warped. So they're a bit warped in terms of like um, at the time. I, I remember. So they asked me to. Um, they just done that second record, and I think they're doing an arena tour, and they wanted me to come play. They asked, they asked me if I'd be up for playing. It's like two thousand, I think, two thousand nine or seven. I don't know whenever that second record came out. Um, and they asked me would I be up for like playing, playing the guitar on the tour with them. And I was like, so I met their manager, managers, and I was like, cool, they worked it out. I don't, I think they they had a set up where they were going to do like their new record, then wheel me out to do like some Down and Albion songs, maybe. Right. You know? But um, I remember I got there and it had all changed. I remember that it was all like different management and it was like, I was drinking a lot, man. I really put a lot of weight on. I was drinking a fuckload. Like that was like alcoholic style drinking. It was really bad. So I was kind of like all over the shop and I just felt, I was just, I think I was just looking for an argument basically. I think I was just looking for a way out even. And I was angry. I guess angry came, anger came up just like what's happened, you know? All those feelings come out from the past, I guess. And uh, so I travelled up to Manchester with him. I remember I went out in the mornings, got drank, drank an awful lot, and just I think got to the venue and uh, yeah, basically just had an argument and left. <laughs> like, okay. You know, it was like nothing really. I guess it was just, it was um, 
I wasn't. Yeah, it was. It was just. I hadn't seen the guys for a couple of years. Everything had changed. I was. I was really unwell, so I can't really. Just wasn't the best thing to be doing. Do you know what I mean? And then was there a couple of times? I don't know. There was a couple. There was a couple of other things we did right here and there, sporadic little gigs. I mean, I should have done that. Really, I should have done it. It would have been good to do it, maybe, but it didn't happen. Yeah, I just wasn't up for it at the time, I guess. Yeah, I read something that you thought maybe the new guitarist Mick wasn't to it for it as well. I don't think, probably, probably not. I mean, I know Mick, uh, for years. I knew Mick before the band. He used to work in Camden. So, I mean, I, I haven't seen Mick for a while. Mick's cool, but he probably wasn't. But um, maybe he was, I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah, let's see, there was, looking back on that, I guess, um, I guess I felt still, even though I left that band, I still felt a bit of anger towards it or a bit like, a bit uh, unfairly treated, yeah. even though that maybe is not the truth. Do you know what I mean? It's probably partly true, but partly, is, you know, a lot of it was my down to me. Do you know what I mean? But but at the time, you're just like, you know, a couple of them feelings with alcohol, and it's like you've got a recipe for anger and just like blaming. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know? So, um, but yeah, I remember Pete ran me after. I do remember this. I think it was one of the last. He ran me after I came back home. And he was like, Pat, what happened? I was like, I don't know. I think I was like a bit in tears. Just, like, I didn't know what was going on. I was such a mess. He's like, Pat, and it's coming from Peter. This actually means quite a lot. He goes, you've got to think about tomorrow, man. <laughs> That's what he said. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just like so selfish. I mean, you know, look, for him to say it to me, I was like, it didn't hit. I, 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 I always remember him saying that, but it didn't actually make sense to me until like a few years later when I started trying to start to really try to get myself well. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him saying that you've got to think about tomorrow, like not just like basically sort yourself out. I was really not very well at all. No. Yeah. Yeah, man. But you still managed to form another band called Big Dave. Is that right? In oh, that 2007? Was, that, was with, that was with Seb. That was my friend Seb. Oh, uh, right. Was, okay, right. We made a record there, but then I, yeah, another story of, you know, we had a record ready to go and then, and it was really different music. <laughs> I really like it. It was like, he's Seb, Seb and Ruth, the two people in the band, so such fantastic musicians. Such fantastic musicians, man. Seb's got a, like they both got the people they've worked with and the stuff they've done. But um, yeah, like I just couldn't get it together. Like we did, we did loads of shows and stuff, and and it wasn't commercial music. They wouldn't have done any any kind of anything. Like it wasn't even indie rock. It was just like cult music. But I was really happy to be doing that. A lot of it was mm. instrumental improvisation, kind of freak out jazz mood music. Like there's yeah, um, I've got it somewhere. I can send that. So can you listen to it anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll send it. I'll send it to you. Um, but then, yeah, it just kind of like, I said, had these great gigs lined up, you know, like Cheltenham Jazz Festivals and these places. But yeah, it just, just, you know, alcohol and drugs got in the way again. So it's just, and, and, and yeah. You know, yeah, I read that you were, um, had a lot of influence from jazz in your, in your music. <laughs> just from listening, well, me and my guitar playing was music. No, yeah, yeah, you genuinely were like into jazz and kind of influenced your music taste kind of thing. I always listened to it from when I was young. I remember when I was um, like first started heavily getting into music. I was a young, like, really young. I'd go to the library and in Hammersmith and there would be like, you know, you know, before I sort of discovered my own kind of music, what I really liked, you go, I'd find, I'd, it was really weird how I did it. I found like there was uh, the Rough Guide book, was the, rough guide to the 100, 100 greatest albums or something like that it was a book like that i can't remember exactly what it was and it was best albums from like each year and there was stuff like miles davis in there and, and coltrane and, and all the greatest hits greatest you know all the artists like bob dylan stones i just went through them all kind of like um, quite obsessively listening to music like i just guess to every single like the top five john coltrane albums i listened to them obsessively and top five miles davis records and then it'd be like the doors and then it'd be like, sort of like i say dylan and then it would be like Marvin New Orchestra and all these kind of so I was doing this really young do you know what I mean I really loved the sound of jazz so I didn't understand it and I just thought what is this it was like <clears throat> it sounded so odd it just sounded so odd and I, I really 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 I was intrigued by it and it was only, only until about um, seven years ago that I consciously tried to actually kind of learn that kind of discipline and, and sort of improvisation right consciously sat down to try and practice it I took elements from it and, and copied it with punk music and sort of that freak out jazz kind of expression stuff. But um, I think that, yeah, I, I think what you listen to definitely seeps out in your playing. But I listened to so much different music as a, as, from, from a young age, I think that was a good thing. Yeah. 
I mean, it's yeah, it's very good. disciplined, isn't it? Like earning yeah, that. Yeah, and the good stuff. I mean, like you know, there's 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 jazz and there's like yeah, it's very disciplined. It's like but like the, uh, like Charlie Parker and stuff like that. It's just like ferocious music to me. It's really yeah. it's like the early stuff is just like it's just the energy behind it all. Is, you know, I'm not talking like jazz or wedding band kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I just love the sound of it. I love the sound of like different chords and just yeah, it's just I find it really interesting. And obviously, you've touched on your drug addiction and everything, Pat, but I watched a video where you're rehabbing Thailand in 2017, the cabin, and it seems yeah. like that's really turned things around for you. Yeah, but see, that's when it got, yeah, yeah. So just before that, Adam, a few people helped, a few friends of mine helped helped me get there. And um, yeah, I was, that was kind of like the point where I realised that it is, um, it's one way or the other, really. Do you know what I mean? There's like, it literally got that serious. It was like, you can, choose to live or, or, or you know oh yeah so I, I and and yeah I just had a, t- a period of time I spent I spent seven months in Thailand and and, and uh, it did it gave me something gave me a lot of time because I never had that time away from it all to see it for what it was like every type of time I get clean before either getting locked up or going to a treatment center or you know two weeks here three weeks there it, it, it was never long enough to like feel well enough to see it for what it was there was always that pool still there uh, but i didn't get enough distance from it to, to be out of its grasp if you know what i mean does that make sense yeah definitely yeah. right in terms just in terms of like physical time like just in terms of like being away from some of you can look back and go what what you know it's got less power over me you still gotta be you know do what you need to do to stay well but it wasn't like i was just like a magnet getting pulled back into it it felt like it, you know, not, not that I'm not taking responsibility, but it was like I had no defence against it. It was just like, yeah. get clean somehow or other, and then you'd be back in there before you know about what happened again. Each time it's getting worse, and each time it's getting worse. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're in and around London, it's not the best place to be, I guess. Yeah, I guess anywhere, though, really. I mean, yeah, you're right, though, you're right. But um, it's different now. My whole place, so I haven't, I can, you know, since I've turned 40, I haven't taken, I haven't taken, I haven't taken anything, I had a drink or anything. Um, so that, that, it's quite nice to say that, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. My forties and that, but um, my whole relationship and feel towards them have changed. It's like I just actually don't don't want that anymore. And every time, every other time in my life, I've been clean or in a, you know quotation marks clean. Wasn't really probably still probably having drinks or whatever. I, I it would I'd still be wanting to do it, but thinking I I can't, I shouldn't. Mm. <laughs> and then it's just a matter of time before you you, you kind of cave in. But so the last two years have been more like. I don't want to. I, I, it's easier then. So it's just easy. If I just see it for what it is, it's just really, it was really destructive, man. Do you think it is a, a mindset kind of thing? Because obviously you hear the cliches about, um, you know, you can go into rehab, but the person themselves got to want to do it. Did you have like a bit of a shift in your mindset? Is that what you're saying, kind of thing? Yeah, uh, def- definitely a shift in my mindset. Definitely like seeing the, seeing consequences for what they are, and like, it's like I said before, the whole thing about getting a bit of time and a bit of distance have time before to see the consequences to me or the people around me because i'd just be thrown i'd I'd put myself back in that lifestyle again i had a real chance to analyze everything and look at stuff it was really painful like look at what the consequences of the way i've lived my life and and everything that encompasses the people you hurt the people how you hurt yourself even unintentionally do you know what i mean kind of takes it's like why would you do that it's just like i realized and it took took fucking so many years to realize that i can't control it and and basically just see it for what it is so if i take if i take drugs or drink yeah it's gonna it's, it, it comes down to this man it's gonna be really bad it's just gonna be bad and it's like i don't want it to be bad anymore there's no there's no denying the fact that it's one of those cliche things you say but there's you hear people say there's no denying the fact i just can't control it so it got really scary like i just don't know what happened you see you know you could lose another two years end up fucking end up in jail for you don't even know what you've done <laughs> you know yeah nighted off getting sectioned that, that that was happening regularly do you know you know mm-hmm. um, and so it wasn't like it wasn't anything like drug taking while you're in the band so that whole period the last, the last 10 years after i left the band it was drug taking like of ill 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 type ill behavior do you know what i mean not it wasn't social put it that way yeah it was like it was it was just basically self-destruction and just like yeah 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 it, it was it was a sign of illness and um, so it was in um in Chiang Mai in Thailand, wasn't it? And yeah, great man, I loved it out there. Yeah, I've been there. It's really a lovely place. Yeah. yeah, it is great, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's great. It had a real like place in my heart that that place. Those people were lovely, and it was I'm really blessed to have that opportunity. Actually, yeah, it, it, it's nice though to feel that way. Of I definitely learned a lot there, and to, to have that feeling. Like not to go on about this, you know, musicians start talking about recovery stuff and it kind of gets a bit, uh, but That's interesting, man. My experience is, for me, um, to not have that weight around my shoulders anymore, it's just been so, it's been, like, I've been enjoying life so much the last couple of years, just real simple, you know what I mean? Simple things, just like being normal, playing my instrument, teaching guitar a bit, like cooking food, watching movies, yeah. reading, reading books, all these things were my main driver was like I don't like to, I can't tolerate feeling normal I can't tolerate feeling uh, I can't tolerate being myself with, with, I have to alter the way I feel all the time do you know what I mean I have to numb myself I just anesthetize myself and that was just what a way to live do you know what I mean it was just like oh I look back on it it just makes me feel really 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 sad actually you know yeah, but I had a yeah. lot of help man so I'm lucky do you know what I mean I'm so lucky I had a lot of help and then I took responsibility and did what I need to do after, you know, and take it seriously. But, um, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good. when you start thinking about regrets and shit like that, you know. It depends how you feel. Some days I wake up, I'm like, nah, I've got no regrets because life is just a journey, isn't it? Life is what you make it. And I've got, you know, time to do stuff. And then you have the thing to say, if I, didn't, if I didn't live like that, I'd have a whole body of work behind me. There'd be loads of music to be made. I, I could have been proud of what I'd done, all this kind of thing. Do, do you know what I'm saying? It depends how you're feeling on the day. And the yeah. end of the day, it's kind of like you just, I, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But then, but but also, you have got, you know, yeah. You, it was kind of messy at times, but you've also done some amazing stuff. Like you've experienced such like stuff that no one, like you know, normal people don't really do it. And yeah. like you know, you can't, you can't, you just can't have regrets. I, I don't believe in I know, that. I know, I'm moving on that, Tom. I generally feel like that most of the time as well, because I've got my health. I've got, I still, I enjoy life. Do you know what I mean? I've got good friends. Yeah, and, exactly. And it's just amazing, it's, it's amazing that you've come out of it clean now and like, you, you know, you, you're loving like being a bit normal, like you say, but, you know, you, yeah, you've been on that journey, which was fucking wicked at the end of the day, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess everyone, yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was, man. There is a last question of whether you've got a funny story, Pat, but don't have to worry about that kind of thing, unless you have got an, a standout one about the Gallagher brothers or another, a story about that time. I don't think it's funny. The only, I've got, no, it's not really funny. I can tell you a story, but it's not, I don't, I don't think No, no, funny. definitely go for it, mate. Yeah. I don't think it's one to end on. It's, it's really awkward. It's like The Office or something. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I remember we played at Brookton Academy and I remember we were chatting. This is, this is not really, this is a shit story, man. I'm and uh, after it was after the gig, oh no, it was before. And somebody introduced me. Oh, oh, Noel's here. Noel's come because he used to come to some of our gigs sometimes. And uh, it's like, all right, Pat. I shook my hand. I was like, all right, Noel. He's like, yeah, I remember I met you last week, didn't I? And I was like, nah, no, no. He goes, yeah, I did. I said, no, you didn't. I wasn't here last week. I wasn't in London this week. He goes, yeah, you were. I was like, no, I wasn't. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was it. And that was last time I spoke to him. Who was right in that situation? I, I think I was right. <laughs> I, I hope I was. I, yeah, I think I was right. Maybe it did, but I, was, I don't think I was right. <laughs> I was like, that was it. Oh, the other one was we were meant to, when we were meant to play, oh man, we were meant to play, um, yeah, Milton Keynes National Bowl. Like, I was going to ask you about that, yeah. Supporting Oasis. I remember we were like in the tour bus <laughs> and uh, uh, we were in the tour bus, the band, but Peter wasn't there. I, th I think we were outside the venue or near, I think. My memory might be a bit skewed on that. And then I remember someone, like the promoter or someone rang Peter and was like, where are you, man? You must be doing sound check. He's like, ah, uh, oh, uh, I'm in Paris. <laughs> That's like one of the biggest shows, it would have been so, so mad to do that show with like however many tens of thousands of people there. Apparently Liam was very, very upset or angry with us, should I say. He just like wasn't happy, which I don't blame him for. <laughs> smashing our gear up and what have you. But, um, yeah, yeah. What, are you smashing the gear up? Well, I heard that. Maybe kicked an amp or something rather than smashing. Oh, right. Yeah, you know. But, um, yeah, it's weird, man. So, grew up listening to Ace. It's like the first album's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so good. First album's fantastic. Um, so, what, I, I mean, that's it's very Pete, that, isn't it, to be in Paris? It's <laughs> meant to be somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. But, exactly. um, yeah what, so. what, what, what happened? Uh, did, 
Did you end up playing that show? No, I don't mind them at home, man. Or like, I don't. I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. vaguely remember that. Yeah, it was like, oh man, it's just like really okay. <laughs> like, it was just a like huge crowd. You know, it was one of the uh, Milton Keynes National Bowl is massive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I do remember that happening because I remember yeah. Liam coming out in the press in there because it seemed like Noah was quite warm towards Pete and his and the music, whereas Liam was pretty against it. <laughs> Yeah, I think Noah saw it as like the new thing, new, and he was kind of cool, you know. Yeah, was, yeah, and I think I think I think you're right in that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a lot of uh, yeah. I think you're right in what you said there. I suppose follow on from that would be was there many times where Pete didn't turn up, and what was that like for the rest of you? Um, yeah, just I mean, yeah, yeah, there was there was a few, there was quite a few. I guess times you'd be worried. Sometimes it would be like probably. For, Probably for the best. Sometimes be pissed off. It was a mixture of everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Which I just bear in mind, whatever I was going through, he was going through a hundred times more. Do you know what I mean? Like in terms of um, pressure he was feeling or whatever. Um. There was times he turned up when he maybe shouldn't have turned up. Maybe doing some, maybe and me as well. Doing gigs we could barely stand. Do you know what I mean? There was times when we were due to play, and uh, outside the venue, I mean, there was riots because we couldn't get on stage for whatever reason. People weren't in the fit state to play. You know, it was, it was, um, it was, it, some of it was disastrous. That was what was crazy at the time. It was like some, from night to night, it'd be like the best show ever to like fucking freak show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For people, for, I remember Pete falling <laughs> asleep, fell asleep on stage once, did he? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he did. He, he, yeah. He fell asleep holding the mic stand and that happened quite a lot. And it was just like, and he wasn't joking. It was like, yeah, she just fell asleep and, and yeah. I mean, I did my fair share of that. So I, I remember late, I, I think I was, I couldn't get off my back, but I was a paid gig lying down. I just can't, yeah, it's just, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that's funny or not, but. <laughs> so it's, it's just like. Just, it's a bit chilled out. No, it, wasn't, it was like just, you know, benzos or whatever it was. Just couldn't move, man. <laughs> it's <absolutely Yeah. laughs> it's laid there like, fuck, can I stay, am I right to stay down here? I think I, I haven't told you there was a time where the, the tune came and it was a guitar, guitar solo and it like just sort of rose up, like coming out of a coffin and then went back down again. The guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. But, yeah, it was, it was, it was um, yeah. You know, you just came alive for your guitar solo. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the final touch. Yeah. It's literally like a spinal tap video, isn't it? 